For our mousetrap project, we built our car out of Legos because they're made of plastic, meaning they're both lighter and stronger than the thin wood we'd be otherwise using. This allows the mousetrap to produce the same amount of force, but allows the car to go a greater distance. The friction between the wheels and the ground is quite important because the rubber wheels allow for rubber, as you can see, allows for a stronger takeoff. They grip the ground and have a higher friction coefficient than CDs. The axles are rounded plus signs, as you can see here. This means that in the circular hole in which they're placed, they don't produce very much friction. The external force comes from the tightly wound spring here on the mousetrap, and altering the lever arm in length would change its power rating. A shorter arm could pull the string faster, the string here, could pull the arm faster than a longer one using the same force just over different times. A longer arm causes the car to go farther because the force is distributed over a longer period of time. Right. Now, Newton's first law applies to inertia. The inertia is changed when the mousetrap activates into a forward motion and is then slowed down again by the energy lost from the rotation of the tires, air resistance, and thermal energy. Newton's second law applies to the formula F equals ma. Since we have to use a certain kind of mousetrap, we can't change the force in the system. By keeping the mass of the car down, we can increase acceleration. Newton's third law is equal and opposite reaction. The goal is to put as much energy from the mousetrap into forward kinetic energy. The energy transfers in this system are the starting with the potential energy in the mousetrap, which is stored in the spring, causes tension in the string, which then turns into kinetic energy in the gear which is connected to the axle, which allows the tires to push backwards on the ground using friction. Finally, the ground pushes forward on the tires.